All right, men, welcome to today's episode of Strong Men, Strong Marriages, how to have more courage in your marriage or how to stop being afraid of your wife. So, um, you know, I was on a call a, a, a while ago with a gentleman who, you know, he's thinking about doing, doing my program, but he was like afraid to talk to his wife about it. And this is very common. Um, and it's just a symptom of kind of an overall difficulty of having difficult discussions with your wife, whether that's about money, sex, in-laws, parenting, religion, housework, how you spend your time doing uh, coaching or counseling or something like that, right? A lot of times we either don't have very good skills to communicate that well, but a lot of times just like mustering up the courage to do this stuff. So we're going to talk about that today and, you know, why it's uh, valuable to do that. <laughs> it feels better to be courageous and it's more attractive to your wife. She's not especially attracted to a guy who is afraid of her. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, my name is Mike Frazier, MD. I'm a psychiatrist and marriage coach, and I help high achieving Christian men have more intimate marriages. So some wins from guys in the program for this week. Guys are doing a great job managing conflicts with patients. So look, you're two different people. You're going to have conflicts throughout your marriage. You know, talking about what we're talking about today, guys are able to understand their wives better, express themselves better, get to win wins, right? Because they're not so afraid because they know how they have the skills, right? Um, having a great Nate, a great date night after going a long time without a date night, you guys are having the, again, courage just to like ask their wife out on a date when they haven't been able to do that for a while. I actually did that with my kids. Uh, I went with my boys this weekend. It was a really fun weekend. We um, helped my grandma move some stuff and helped my dad. It was just really good connecting time. I uh, really loved it. But as part of it, I had them like ask me on a fake date. And, you know, one of my sons said, you know, it's just asking that's the hard part. And a lot of us have that, that fear, right? You know, it takes courage to ask a girl out. And especially if you haven't asked your wife out for a while, or you haven't approached her for sex for a while, it's scary, you know? Um, and so we're talking about how to overcome that today. So guys are doing that, right? They're, they're asking it. They're asking their wives out. They're approaching their wives for sex. They're, they're making those requests. They're finding that courage and it feels a lot better. And the yes is a lot more than they expect. Okay, so again, like learning to make requests and getting yes, they're doing just such a great job of that. Uh, feeling more calm about their wife's decisions, right? Some guys come in in a more extreme circumstance in their marriage that their wife's thinking about divorce or separation, and guys are getting to a place of calm. Like understand they can't control their wife's decision, but you know they're just going to be the best choice. They're not going to worry if she's going to choose them or not, but they're going to be a good choice. And guess what? When they do that, their wife is a lot more attracted to them, and they can start working on things much more productively. Um, Working together to plan family trips, you know, when guys have been talking about like separation, now they're talking about doing family trips together. Powerful. Um, again, getting to understanding and connection after arguments. You're always going to have arguments, but guys are learning how do you come back after that and create more intimacy because of it. Really, you kind of need arguments to create real intimacy. Uh, again, getting to regular date nights after near separation, having that date night be a recurring thing. Okay. Listening to understand instead of trying to fix it that's powerful, right? And creating connection, mental, emotional intimacy. So guys, again, to create a strong marriage, you need trust, right? A lot of that has to do with your management of your own thoughts, feelings, emotions, being spiritually strong, being a man of your word, okay? Being trustworthy. Then communication, getting good at understanding her, expressing yourself, asking for what you want. That's kind of what we're talking about today. Then intimacy, sexual intimacy, right? And also mental, emotional intimacy, Okay. For me, you know, I got back from that trip with my boys. My wife and I just had a really great reconnection. It was great to see each other, you know, talked, had fun. It was just great, uh, great time together. So what you're trying now, probably what you're doing right now is you're avoiding difficult conversations with your wife, right? About money, sex, in-laws, parenting, religion, housework, or time. You know, she's spending too much and you, but you don't want to say anything about it or you want to have sex, but you're not sure how to bring it up or even just go on a date night or hold her hand or something like that. Right. Um, with in-laws, you know, you don't really like how things are, but you don't really want to talk to her about it. Um, with parenting, you don't really like how she's doing something, but you don't bring it up with religion. Again, same thing, housework. So maybe in some of these, you're doing more than your fair share, right? With, uh, like with parenting, right. You're, you're doing more than you think is really fair. You're doing more housework than you think is fair. You're kind of shutting down your hobbies, but she's not shutting down hers. And what you're hoping for is that she'll kind of recognize it and then pay you back for it. Okay. So you're just, you're afraid to like bring anything up. Um, but again, this is the mosquito cycle, right? You're, you're doing more than you think is fair. You're not telling her that you want anything back. You're expecting it back. You don't get it. You get mad, right? 
So when that starts happening, a lot of times you start maybe making some passive aggressive comments, right? Where you're like, oh, well, you know, uh, why are you dressed up so nice? You know, are you trying to impress somebody else when you're upset that your wife's not having sex with you? Or man, you sure spend a lot of time with your with your sister and your brother, but not with me. Or, but you probably wouldn't say not with me, right? Because that's too confrontational. <laughs> you just say, oh yeah, you spend so much time with your with your family, right? They seem really important to you. Okay, passive aggressive, right? Oh well, you know you you don't seem to be you know too concerned about leaving your clothes out. You know that might be even a little bit overly aggressive for maybe how you're doing it. Um, so you make comments like that. You complain, right? You know why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? You spend too much time out, right? So here's why that doesn't work. It avoids direct confrontation. Okay. Why do you avoid direct confrontation? A couple of reasons. One, you might be afraid of your wife's emotional response. Okay. So maybe she's had a, a history of you bring something up and she maybe shuts down. Maybe she just seems upset. Maybe she withdraws for a while and you don't really like that. And so you don't bring it up, right? Because you don't want to make her mad. This comes back to kind of, the, if you haven't listened to the first like four episodes of this podcast, go back and listen to them. Um, the idea of like trying to make your wife happy, right? So you avoid confrontation because it will make your wife unhappy and it almost always will initially. And so if your main goal is make my wife happy, you won't bring stuff up, right? Because in the short run, she's going to be unhappy. Okay. So you're fearful of that emotional response. And so you just don't, uh, you don't do it. Right. Or the other reason you might not bring it up is you're afraid of it ruining your chances to get attention, appreciation, affection, or sex. Okay. So you don't bring it up because you think, oh, she's going to be upset and then she won't give me what I want. Right. So in, a, in short, you're, you're afraid of your wife. Right. And the problem is it doesn't feel good to be afraid of your wife. And it's extremely unattractive. Like, could you imagine your wife saying, OK, like, let me make a list of things that I really want in a husband. OK, number one, he's afraid of me. Number two, he never tells me what he's thinking about. Uh, number three, he's passive aggressive. Like, that's really who I want. <laughs> OK. Like it's not going to be on there, but it's very common for guys to behave in this way. Okay. So again, making passive crowds of comments, complaining or having anger outbursts. May, again, that's the mosquito cycle, right? You're doing something nice. You don't get anything back. You get mad, you get angry, right? So some of these, they seem a little bit stronger than just like not saying anything and getting run over, but really they're immature. And so they're weak and unattractive. Like, a, you know, a, a Maybe a baby can make a passive aggressive comment, but like a teenager certainly would. Um, you know, a, a kid can complain. Okay, a toddler has anger outbursts. So if you, if that's what you're turning to, again, very unattractive. So you have low trust, poor communication, and then that results in no mental, emotional, or sexual intimacy. Okay, so if you're experiencing any of those right now, okay, probably you're missing some of these lessons. <laughs> okay, so here's what you need to do instead. So being a coward right? Cowardice is feeling a fear and not doing it. Okay. So like think about getting up on a diving board, you know, it's scary to try to jump off a diving board. So the kid that like walks back and like climbs back down, everybody's kind of making fun of that kid. And he doesn't feel very good because he, he backed down from something that was not going to kill him, but that was scary. Right. Courage on the other hand is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Right now, the kid that goes and jumps off the diving board and like doesn't seem to care, you know, a lot of people admire that guy, but the, the kid that goes up and you can tell he's scared, right? And then he jumps anyway, that's the guy you really admire, right? Because you know he felt it, but he he went ahead and did it. Okay, and that fear goes down, you know, the kid that just goes and jumps off, um, he's probably just done it a bunch of times, right? And so now it doesn't bother him because he knows he'll be okay, right? So again, courage, feeling the fear and doing it anyway. So it's another def the definition of courage, right? The state or quality of mind or spirit that enables one to face danger, fear, or vicissitudes. That just means like stuff that happens with self-possession, confidence, and resolution, bravery. Sounds great, right? I really like that definition. Yeah, the, the state or quality of mind or spirit that enables one to face danger, fear, or vicissitudes with self-possession, confidence, and resolution, bravery. Look, it probably will be scary to have tough discussions with your wife. Like it, it will just, but if you want to be courageous, do it anyway. That's the difference between someone who is a coward and someone who is courageous. Okay. So look, you just have the discussions, right? Whether it's about money, sex, in-laws, parenting, religion, you bring it up. Okay. And you try to get to an agreement. Okay. Let's say with, with money, right? 
So you say, hey, you know, I don't really like the way our spending is going. So you know, let's get together and really make a plan here. OK. Or, you know, with uh, let's say you want to do this program. OK. You just say, hey, I really want to do this program. Here's why. Right. I want to build myself up into a better, stronger man. OK. Sometimes, though, you have to go with forgiveness and not permission. Right. <laughs> like let's say you want to do this program. A lot of guys will just do it, right? And maybe tell their wife later about it. This is especially true, like if you use it as a business expense, because then it really is just like your business, right? You put it on the business and, you know, it will help you with your business because you'll learn how to do all this stuff better, communicate better, be more trustworthy, manage your emotions better. All of that, you know, is super pow powerful for your business operations as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes you just have to, do something that's kind of like in the middle between it, it's still a little bit that you're, you're afraid of that response. You're not going to really tell her about it because you're kind of afraid to tell her about it. Right. So it's kind of in between. You're still doing it. Right. Which is good. Instead of like being so afraid that you don't do it. Okay. The, the most courageous thing to do would be you'll let her know. Yeah. I want to do this program. I'm going to do it. You might not like it at first, but you're going to, you know, like how things turn out. You know, I'm going to make sure to become the kind of guy that I want to be through it. Okay, she's going to doubt it. She's going to be suspicious. But again, you just kind of choose to do it anyway. Because again, your wife's not always going to agree. Sometimes you have to do what you think is right, even if your wife does not agree. That's what real courage is. Okay, and that's spiritual strength. So like, if you're like, man, this program sounds perfect for me, I just have to do it. Even if my wife doesn't like it, even if she's mad about it. One of the guys in the program, you know, this was the strongest example. His, his wife was like, I'm going to leave you. And this is what most guys are afraid of, right? Like, oh, my wife's going to leave me if I if I spend this money to do a program like this. You know, his, his wife threatened that, right? She was very serious about it. And this guy said, no, like, this is the guy I want to be. Stuck with it. Now we're working together. They're doing great. Like, that's the commitment. <laughs> that's the, that's like a super strong, courageous commitment level. Um, and it pays off, right? Because it feels good to you. And that's much more attractive than being afraid to bring something up with your wife. So I'm using that example. It can be, it can be with any of this stuff. You know, with housework, you're finally going to have that discussion with her. Like, no, like, I don't, like, I feel like I'm doing too much. We need to have it more fair, right? Um, you know, I'm going to hire a housekeeper, whether you really want to or not, right? I'm going to have someone else do this, whether you want to or not. I'm going to stop doing the dishes because I think that's too much even if you want me to do it right like sometimes you just have to do what's right even if she doesn't agree okay I'm going to go spend time with my family even if you it makes you mad because I feel like I need to build those relationships as well not that you exclude your wife right but you need to find that balance so again sometimes you have to do what's right even if your wife doesn't agree okay I need to do something different with my religious beliefs because that's what's really true to me okay We've, I've had guys come to the program like that and it's hard but again, like that's bravery, following through with what you believe is right, even if your wife doesn't agree. It feels better and it's a lot more attractive to your wife. Okay, it's courageous. Okay. So another thing that you need to do instead, so you need to have those discussions. Sometimes you just have to do something even if your wife doesn't agree with it if you believe it's the right thing to do. Okay, again, the strongest way to do that is to tell her you're doing it. Kind of in the middle is doing it without telling her. <laughs> and then the worst is just not doing it at all, even though you think it's the right thing to do. Okay, that's the least strong, least attractive. The other thing you need to do is ask what you ask for what you want instead of complaining. Okay, it's really easy to complain. All right, you spend too much money. Okay, you don't have sex with me enough. Um, you know, I do too much for the kids. You know, I don't like your church. I don't like your. I don't like how much time you spend with your parents. Right, it's easy to make complaints. It's a lot harder to be very clear on what you want. Okay, it takes thought to do that. You also have to face the fear that she might say no. And that's sometimes the even harder part. Kind of coming back to my son, he's like, yeah, the hard part's asking because she might say no. Okay. But here's the thing. Do it anyway. <laughs> do it anyway. That That's being courageous. Okay. Being a coward is feeling fearful and then not doing it. Okay. When it's right. When it's the right thing to do. Okay. Intimacy. It's knowing and being known. And so a request, it makes you know, makes you known to your wife. So let's say with money, hey. Here's what I'd like. Let's sit down once a week and manage it. If you can't manage it, you know, we need to separate our finances and we're going to do it that way. Okay. With in-laws, hey, look, I'd really like to spend this time with my family instead of yours. Here's why. Right. And you might say, no, she might be mad. But again, that's strength, bringing up what you want. Now, you still want to be open to her ideas, try to get to a win-win. But a lot of times you have to take the first step and be brave. Right. Be courageous. Tell her what you want. Okay. With housework, here's how I'd like it divided. Here's why. Okay. 
She might be mad. She might not like it. But a lot of times you'll get to an agreement. Hey, I want to go on a date with you. Here's the day I want to do it. She might say, no, that's scary. But again, like coming back to the guys in the program that are doing so well, like they're, it's normal to feel scared of doing some of this stuff. But when you're courageous and brave, a lot of times she's just going to say yes, right? You kind of build up all this fear in your mind. And then she's just like, yeah, sure, no problem. That happened to me with tons of things that I finally requested of my wife with all of these areas, you know, money, sex, in laws, parenting, religion, housework, time. With sex, you can't typically jump right there because, again, you got to build trust and mental, emotional intimacy first. So maybe you should pick one of these other areas, right, with housework or with time or with whatever, um, you know, and you, you find some win-wins there first. And again, you have to prioritize her. You have to learn to communicate. You got to bring fun, flirting, and passion for her to really be like turned on to want to have sex with you. So you got to build those other foundations first. Um, you know, making that request really, I want to have sex more often. A lot of guys jump there and then they get turned down. They're like, oh, Mike, well, making requests doesn't work, but you didn't build these other pillars first. Okay. The other thing you can do if you're feeling upset about something is you can express it directly instead of being passive aggressive. So let's say your wife, you know, didn't do the dishes when she said she would. So that's the situation. What you would express to her is what you thought about that. So you could say, hey, like when you did that, I just didn't feel like I was a priority to you. And then how you felt. I was sad when you did that. Right. So that's how you do it. Instead of being passive aggressive. Oh, well, you know, you, you say, you say, I don't do what I do, but neither do you, you know? And, she, and then she's like, what are you even talking about? You're like, oh, never mind. You know, super passive aggressive, super unattractive, right? Here's what you do and said, Hey, listen, last night you said you do the dishes and then you didn't, you know, I kind of felt like I wasn't a priority for you. And I was kind of sad. So, and then you follow it with a request. So look, I'd like you to follow through on the dishes, give a reason why. Okay. So things are fair in our marriage. I know I can count on you and know that I'm a priority to you. So, you know, tonight, are you planning on doing that? Yeah. Could you follow through? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And look, thank you for telling me. I understand, you know, of course you'd be sad, you know, when I said that, you know, just to understand why I didn't do it, you know, I got this call from whoever and, and that's why. And then you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. Thanks for telling me, um, you know, usually that's how it works out. <laughs> and then look, but when you do make a request, be open for a discussion, right? Because she she might be like, yeah, you know what? I did say I want to do dishes, but really, I don't. I hate the dishes. I, I'd rather not do them. And then you could be like, okay, well, you know, let's let's still be fair. You, you do want housework to be fair, right? Yeah, I do. Then you're like, okay, well, you know, how about you do sweeping and I'll I'll do the dishes, you know, whatever. Get good at communicating, getting to win wins, right? So, guys, in summary, your wife is not attracted to a man who is afraid of her. She just isn't. Again, coming to that like a teenage girl who sits down and makes a list of things she wants in a husband, she's never going to say, I want a husband who won't tell me what he's thinking because he's afraid. Um, I, I want a husband who, who you know, um, gets, instead of asking for what he wants, gets mad and is passive aggressive. Okay. She's never going to write that. Okay. So she's not attracted to a guy who's afraid to show who he is. She's not attracted to a guy who's afraid to express his feelings. She's not afraid. She's not attracted to a guy who's afraid to ask for what he wants. She's just not. Okay. She's not also, this is counterintuitive, but she's not attracted to a guy who's afraid to do what he believes, even if she doesn't agree. Okay. Watch a romantic comedy. Just sit down and watch one. See what happens. 100% of the time, the guy will do something that's right that she doesn't agree with initially, but he still goes ahead and does it. And then eventually she comes around. Why is that so attractive? Because look, you want to be a leader, okay? And you lead by following what's right, okay? As a Christian guy, you lead by following what Christ teaches, okay? And look, you know, like let's say, again, doing this program, like building these skills is the right thing to do for you and your family. Your wife might not see it at first. She might be mad at first. But when you do it anyway, it shows strength. And then she comes around. She's like, man, I'm so glad you did that, right? Or like, you know, within laws or, or, you know, you finally have the discussion and at first she's mad. She didn't really want to like hear what you wanted, but then later she's like, man, yeah, I'm glad you told me. Right. So again, she's not attracted to a guy who is afraid to do what he believes is right. Even if she doesn't agree. So do what's right. Even if she doesn't agree, choose courage over cowardice. Okay. You're going to be scared to do this stuff. Okay. To actually ask for what you want to bring stuff up with your wife. You're going to be scared. Do it anyway. A guy who's courageous is scared, but does it anyway. A coward is scared and doesn't do it. Okay. Have the tough discussions, express your frustrations, ask for what you want. Okay. 
and do what's right, even if your wife doesn't agree. Okay, so learn how to do this in my program. Come join us, right? We're learning how to do all this stuff. So visit strongmenstrongmarriages.com. You're going to develop all these skills. You're going to develop strength. You're going to develop skill. You're going to feel great about who you are. You're going to learn how to communicate really well. You're going to build mental, emotional intimacy and create sexual intimacy. You will create that by becoming this strong, attractive man. We use all the best skills from counseling, coaching, you know, how your brain works. We combine that with Christ's teachings. And so it just can't fail. You're going to become a more Christ-like man through this process. You're going to feel better about who you are, be a stronger, better man, stronger, better leader. And you will create an outstanding marriage by going through this process, 100%. Maybe not as fast as you'd like, maybe not exactly in the way you'd like, but you will create it because you'll be the guy that attracts a great woman to him. Okay. When you follow Christ, you're learning these strengths and skills. Again, you just can't fail. Okay, guys that come in and do it, they just don't fail. They become stronger, attractive men who are following Christ. How can you lose doing that? Okay, so come join us, strongmenstrongmarriages.com, and I will see you there. Stay strong, men. We'll see you next episode.